If someone was to ask me what's been some of the most iconic shots seen in Formula 1, the first thing I'd say is probably shots like 2005 with Alonso winning the championship, Toto Wolff smashing his headphones on the desk, Nicole Scherzinger celebrating Hamilton's championship win, and the one thing all of these clips have in common is that it's all been filmed by the same person, Jean-Michel. He's been working in Formula 1 for over 30 years as a specialised camera operator, and I got to meet him about seven years ago when we were working together in Formula E, and we've kept touch ever since, but we've never had a proper deep old chat about Formula 1 and what he gets up to. And so, that's what this video is all about. I mean, it's not often you have a video game character created after you. Lando Norris, a year ago, he said to me, mate, you in the game, you filming me at the race, I'm playing the game and you're still there. You always filming me every single week. Oh, that's the actual camera guy. He does the F1 filming. And I'm like, okay, sorry about that. Just, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at you, you know? So basically, I'm based on filming emotions of the people, happy people, unhappy people. For example, I've got a, a really famous, I did a really famous picture last year in Jeddah. On the Saturday, I was filming a Jos Verstappen banging the, the table when, when Max hit the curb. I was very happy, he was not happy. And the next day, I had the famous picture when, when Toto uh, broke his headphones on slow motion, when he was very upset when, when Max and Lewis uh, hit each other. I was very, very, very happy, <laughs> but I could not say, yeah, I was like, and I went back after my shot and I was outside the garage, I was like, yeah. So at the beginning, uh, I didn't have the technique at all. I'm French, as you can hear. Yeah. At the time, the army was mandatory. So I went for 12 months at the historical archive service of the French Air Force. I, I learned how to take pictures because we had camera, black and white, we have films, and it teach me how to to manage the technique. Then I went to the to the video side. I was filming conferences and all private events and all that thing. Back in 1992, a company called me and said, you want to work bringing VIPs for the garage tour for Shell and Peugeot? I, I must tell you that in the family, we are supporting Alain Prost big time. I said, okay, great. I'm going to see Alain Prost, one of my heroes. It was in 1992 and don't forget in 1992, Alain Prost retired for one year. And then uh, she said to me, we're going to work with McLaren at Senna and Gar Berger. And actually, I want to see Alan Prost and I was going to see the opposite of my idol. You know what I mean? So at the end of 96, I had a contact to call Formula One management. I called them and I said, I'm, I'm very interesting. They, I know you, you're setting a, a, a Formula One television channel. I would like to work for you. He said, are you available for the whole season? I said, yes, sir, I'm available. He said, you got it. And I put the phone down and I, I fall down on the floor. It was my, my, my first complete Formula One season back in, in 97, filming and, and living my dream and working in my passion. So jumping forward then to 2022 and your role is known as a RF camera operator, which for those who don't know, it means your camera feed is being sent via radio frequency back to the TV compound to be used for the broadcast. Uh, but your setup is a little bit different. So what are you currently filming with? I learned in Formula One to use a slow motion camera, uh, Ari Amira. I film in 200 frames a second. I film in 250 shutter. The, the stop is completely open i put a lot of filters to to be all the time really really uh, short on the focus uh, i guess uh, people will appreciate what, what i said and with that your camera has an rf link which means the broadcast sensor can remotely see everything your camera does not just the image you're filming but you know the camera menus and so on but those links are usually capped at 50 frames per second so how are you able to transmit slow motion footage back across to the broadcast sensor so basically i film then i replay the shot I send it via RF link, my picture in slow-mo to an EVS operator, which replay uh, on, on time delay. So basically, if there's a, a battery problem or if there's a technical problem, I will be in a big... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I film, I re and I replay. For example, on the grid, when I'm filming on the grid, I'm filming, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 shots, and then I replay all the 30, 40 shots. And then at the same time, I need to watch what's happened uh, if there's a pit stop or if there's an accident or, you know, and then I need to remember uh, I clip 25 and I need to come, come back to the clip 24. And then voila. it's very good for my memory because I'm getting older. <laughs> and how much creative control do you have over the shots you film? I think like one of my favorite shots is where you spin the camera on its axis uh, just as the car is going out of their pit box. So is that something that you're doing or is that something that's been requested by Formula One? In the Formula One TV cameraman on the pit wall, on the pit lane, sorry, we are like six or seven. 
they all have their different styles. They all have a lot of experience. They all have a lot of trust from the director. Incredibly, incredibly a, a team effort. And all the creativity in the pit lane, they are well accepted by, by, the, by the directors. In Formula One and in Formula E, I'm feeling a lot of emotions. I talked to them before and I said, if you win, come to see me. They are they coming to see me, I call them. I'm kind of point of reference, you know, uh, when they're going out of the car. People know then when I'm around, it's, it's a, a good thing. And I can imagine that loads of people now know you as a person filming all these emotional slow motion shots and I guess sometimes might play up to the camera. So what is now a typical race day for you like? When I'm working in Formula One or Formula E, I've, I've got few few uh, radios and I'm in my, in my bubble and I, and I listen all the information coming and I'm the only one to deciding what I'm, what I'm doing. I bring my bag with my three batteries uh, between the, 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 the pit wall, uh, Red Bull and, and, and Ferrari. During the weekend, I'm, I'm going to see the Parc Fermé. I'm talking with the FIA people. I'm talking with the event people. And I try sometimes to move the Parc Fermé for me to have the good picture. But I changed my way of working after years after years because now people, when they see me, they try to, how can I say that, to, to hide their emotions. So now I'm, I'm hiding behind the behind the tires, behind the behind the uh, mechanics to to try to capture the the good emotion and try to blend in the team to to be uh, to be um, to be invisible. And of course, I've got to ask this: What's been some of the most memorable moments for you filming Formula One for the past 30 years? When Jensen Button won his uh, won his World Championship in in Brazil, so basically he jumped out of the car and and he, he, he kissed me. He grabbed me and he kissed me. The director was shouting in my ears: Jean Michel, what the fuck are you doing here? Leave him alone! And, and Jensen was like: Jean Michel, I'm very pleased. And I was like: Yeah, can we celebrate later on with Michael? Uh, we, we, we've got so much Michael Schumacher. We've got so much. Memories, for example, uh, I remember in Australia, we had like a, a beginning of the season interview. It was late because there was an interview before and I was sweating and, and try to put my tripod, my camera, my lights. And he said to me, easy, easy, easy. You know, do you want a coffee or a drink? I said, yeah. And now Michael Schumacher is, is giving me is, is giving me an espresso. This is the moment I, I never forget. And actually, Michael, on his last race back in 2012, uh, in the morning, he said to me, I would like to, to see you uh, after the race. So I said, OK, thank you very much. He gave me his racing gloves from his, his last race, uh, which are which are framed uh, there, there at home. And he said to me, you support me all these years and, and I give you my last uh, gloves from my last race ever in Formula One. Now, I did ask this originally on Twitter, so I will ask you here, what's been some of the most iconic shots you've ever seen in Formula One? Do let me know down in the comments below. And a massive thanks to Jean-Michel for being in the video. His Instagram is also linked down below. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.